Welcome to the Crazy Time Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. You know, we we sometimes talk about the ladies on the podcast. You know? <laughs> yeah, I like ladies, Jonas. You know? They got pretty stuff. They got pretty things. They got pretty yeah, things. Yeah, so... You know, but today I want I want to come at it from a different angle. What is a Is it boobs? Oh man. Is it the boob angle? I mean, we can say that. Okay. What is the biggest green flag for a woman? We talk about red flags all day. What is the green What do you meet a girl you're like, I'm taking her home to mom. You know what, Jonas? I will allow this only because it's it's been a long time since we've talked about the good old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that in the creepiest yeah, way yeah, possible. Exactly. So, so when we're talking about the ladies, what's a green flag? Wow. So red flag, obviously, is something that you notice about a person that is like, hmm, I should probably discontinue speaking. Uh, or engaging with this individual. Right. Like they're rude to a server and you're like, hmm, that's a little weird. Or they like yell at a dog on the street. That's a red flag. Right, right. Uh, you find a crack pipe in their bedroom. Yeah, big red flag. Big red Dirty flag. Dirty needles. You catch them having sex with your mother. Ladies, sorry, that's yeah, a red that's flag. that's a red flag. Also, if I catch my girlfriend having sex with my mother, probably a red flag too. I would say so. Green flag. Something that says, yeah, this is the one. Yeah, we don't ever talk about that. Um, hmm. I would have to say is that a uh, shared interest is a big green flag for me. Like they kind of they like the stuff that you like. Yeah. Okay. Like All say right. say you came across the girl and she was like, oh my god, I really like volleyball and improv in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, I'm like, well, you, hello there. You're not gonna tell me you're not gonna get a little wet. Uh, wow, I don't. You, are you you're gonna get a little wet, right, dude? If I yeah, if I met a chick who's into volleyball like I am, dude, I'd yeah. be like me and her just volleyballing exactly. all day, all balling volleys out yeah. here. Just, Heck yeah, she get your bussy wet a little I'll bit. I'll set her. She spikes it. She spikes it. I set her. You know, whatever, dude. Bump it to me, girl. So yeah, I think you know yeah. So I have to say like shared interests. Like and and for me, yep. it'd be like yo, if a girl was like, I really like to do, uh, I like to do D and D, and I like to play Overwatch and. uh <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I like Eat vegetables. She like S and D. I'd be like, that's great. Wow, wow, yeah. I mean, I know she shares her interest in that. Then, so because you were talking about shared interest, I'm glad I mean, I'm interested in getting my DS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. so you know, yeah, but do you own? I, but here's the other thing, though. How how much of the same interest do you want as your girlfriend? Because then, like, mm. then you don't have your own things to go do. That's true. That's true. Like, because um, when you're that enmeshed, that becomes unhealthy sometimes, too. I feel that, now, this is obviously coming from somebody who's been a failure in relationships through the majority of his life. Oh, so. uh, well, both take, of us. So, with, you know, take, hey. Take, that's very true. Take it with a grain of salt. But I feel it's like you want to focus on the things that you have in common because the differences are going to... They're going to happen. Nobody's going to be an exact copy. Nobody's going to have all of your shared interests. But you want to focus on the ones that you do have so that you can enjoy those things together. That would be my idea. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, well, I think here's what I think is a green flag. So as you mentioned volleyball, I play volleyball a couple nights a week. A green flag is someone who says, go have fun playing volleyball. I'll see you when you get home. Ooh. That's a green flag. Pro proclivity to give you your alone time. Yeah, and not only that, to like go out and be social without them because they're fine with that and they're comfortable in their person. They're secure. Yeah, they yeah. have like a secure relationship style. Yeah, you know what I have to say is like that that level of uh mental maturity is is Yeah, cuz we've all dated someone they're like, "Hey, I'm going to go hang out with my friends." And and then they're like, "What, you don't want me to come with you?" And you're like, no, I don't. I'm just going to hang out with my friends. There's gonna be no other girls there. Also, let me let me discuss the fact that as a man, you wanting to go somewhere and do something alone, without scrutiny, you consider <laughs> like a positive trait. How insane does that sound? Oh, that that's a, so much of a problem that that makes it a green flag. Yeah, that that's a green flag for you, and it's something so simple, something so simple. Tell I'm me not, how many people heard when I said it, and they're like, "Yeah, that would be nice." Exactly, all of us, all of us. Yeah, said that. all of us. Yeah, man, it's, it's all of us. Yeah, 
This is, uh, look, I'm not going to get too red pill. Yeah, I don't want to get. I don't even want to take. This is a positivity episode. I'm it not, is. But like, yeah, but the it, fact it, that that is a green flag says a lot about our culture. It does. It does. It seems to me is like a lot of the things that that guys want, and it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> guys only want one thing and it's disgusting <laughs> it's disgusting is a lot of times we would like less input on on things uh more input is uh you know definitely helpful at times but less input less less control more more autonomy for ourselves yeah you know what you know what else is a big green flag what's um that? to me what's that uh being accountable like oh you, if you, apologizing no admit <laughs> no admitting admitting when you're wrong or yeah, yeah, not even just admitting when you're wrong but like being like oh my bad i didn't understand or i misunderstood you or i fucked up i overreacted or like i under or i didn't get how you were feeling about that or like whatever yeah. and that's not that's not even just with women it's yeah, with yeah i was gonna say you run into that in, in yeah men and here. women right that's a green flag that Oh, that, we can go for a green flag for just people in general and maybe not. Yeah, I mean, all women. these things we're talking about are green flags okay. for both. Like, I guess since we're men and, and like women, that's where we went. But huh. but right, like, but I have had people. I mean, I am I'm, I'm able to do that. And okay. people have said to me like, oh, like, I'm like, yeah, I'll, yeah. like, but I'm not going to apologize when I'm not wrong. And that's one of my red flags is like, I, like, it's like there's there's the keep in the peace apologies which i don't think are that's i think if you're here's the other thing uh, if, you don't like to keep the peace apologies you like don't. if but here's the thing you shouldn't you have to em. you should be able to say to someone i'm sorry that that hurt your feelings yeah. that was not my intention yeah i apologize that your feelings are hurt yeah but that was not my intention so, that should be fair enough they should have positive intent to be like so, i understand that so you say jamie fox shouldn't have apologized for what he said that uh, they killed Jesus. What do you think they'll do to you? And he I don't was. I know what that means. Uh, essentially, it's saying, like, uh, if they killed what was considered the greatest man to ever walk to earth, what do you think they'll do to you? So you have to be careful. You can't trust everybody. Um, you, you, you can't. Oh, and the people who love Jesus are the ones that betrayed him and killed him anyway. Yeah, essentially, it's like if, if humanity can kill Jesus, what do you think humanity is going to do to a simple person like you? Okay. This is an. It's an. Like I didn't realize the uh, the culture the cultural relevance of this statement, but it's a it's a very common statement that has been used in uh, African American ugh, Black American culture over the years. I'm very familiar with it. I've used it myself. Um, and the, the what do you call it? The Jewish Church said that it was anti-Semitic. And is why it? is that? It's because when you say they killed Jesus. You're talking about the Jews because the Jews obviously did it. It's in it's in the Bible, but a lot of hate groups use that in a certain way. Oh, I he see. did apologize, but a lot of people are saying, "Why did you apologize? You didn't say anything wrong." It was an idiom. It was an idiom for it. they killed Jesus. They killed the most holy man. They killed this person. It could have been icon. the Jews or anyone. Yeah, in his in the way he meant it was like. Yeah. People killed Jesus. Exactly. So what would people do to you? I can 100% tell you that every black person that has ever said that never thought Jews. Because <laughs> Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. And in fact, that that's what makes it even, that's what makes the, the statement more impactful is that your own people right. killed you. Right, right. Yeah. And then what do you think they'll do to you? Yeah. Exactly. Well, he also has a lot to lose. I mean, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but it was just it was just kind of weird. So wait, wait a minute. That's what lot, I was talking he, about. He has a lot to lose. So what you're saying is that so if you should apologize, even if it's not necessary, if you have a lot to lose, if it's going to cost you a relationship, should you apologize? It depends how deep. That's to keep the peace. Of the apology. Yeah, but I guess it depends what it's about. I'll ask you a question. You don't have to answer it. All right, and, and we're, we're out of time, but I'm down for this. And I apologize. Go. Well, good. Should, this is something that should happen at the end of the episode anyway. Um, do you think a keep the peace of apology could have saved uh, your past relationships? Oh, like my marriage or just any of the relationships? You can um, answer that the way you decide. Did my relationships end because of a keep the peace apology? Do you apology? think a, peace, a keep the peace apology could have saved it is what I asked. What does that mean, I guess, then? Do you, do you feel like if you had just made a keep the peace to apology, 
for a certain argument or a certain stance that you had that it would have been beneficial and that the tide of the relationship could have <clears throat> been um been to a, a point where it could have been healed or it could have helped at least prolong it. No, because I'm a good communicator and even if I won't give a piece of peace, keep the peace apology, we work through that. It's like usually all most of my relationships end after like a series of things happening that you realize it's to a point where like, and it's not because of one incident. I haven't had a relationship that had like one breaking point that like, okay. I look back and there's like a precipice, like we were at this crossroads okay. and so I chose like, X instead of Y and that's where it all fell apart. Like, yeah, no, it, all, it always leads up to that. So maybe it was a string of keep the peace. Apologies. I mean, it could have been. It would have been like years of keep the peace apologies. Right. Right. But, right. but I'm also good at being like, Hey, like, it, like I'm not gonna be a dick about it. I'm not gonna be like I'm not saying I'm like I, I genuinely am sorry that your feelings are hurt, but I need to let you know that that is not how I meant it. Here's what I meant. I do feel bad that your feelings are hurt from that. You know what I mean? I I I, I will not be the guy who's like sorry you feel that way. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I in the past I probably have been the sorry you feel that I way guy. I know you've said that. I 100% know you said that. I mean, you said that in the podcast before. So I know it's a part you, of your lexicon. You you uh you that never is, said sorry you feel that way? No. Do you Oh, you're a keep the peace guy? Um sometimes. Do you, do you feel yeah. keep the peace is a lie? Yes. Ooh, so then it comes up another question. I like don't, what yeah, but, I don't, but I what don't if I just I mean I don't lie in my relationship. So keep I feel like keeping the peace keeping the pieces are lies. So yeah. I feel like I'm lying by doing that. Who's wrong? Who's right? You're lying to keep the peace. I'm not lying to not keep the peace. Who's who's in a better spot? I feel as though a certain degree of manipulation is integral to every relationship. Oh, man. Every relationship. And I don't mean just romantic. Friends, I don't mean work, just friendly. I mean, like every interaction that I have with people, I give them a certain degree. Even the of, guy at the corner, the guy who runs the counter at the corner store. Exactly. Because if I walk in and I smile, hey, how you doing today? I'm lying. I don't fucking care. Yeah. You're like, That's oh, a man. Lie. Yeah, you, you, you've been lie. in there like 10 times. You're like, man, you yeah. get a haircut. You looking nice. Yeah, it's like, a, you it's, know, like, yeah. that's a, that's a, keep, up a little it, bit. It's a, that's a keep the peace apology. You know? All right. All oh, right. I'm not feeling well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's a keep the peace apology. You care. should be like, I don't care about your sickness. Exactly. Can I get that's my, the truth. Can I, get so, my, can I get my blunt wrap? Please? So honesty, honesty has no place in, in, this, in this world because Ooh, American that's culture. That's a deeper cut. And we'll 100%. end it right there. Crazytown.com is where it's at. Go subscribe for Jonas. TNT. Oh, yep.